if all your meetings were cancelled for the day, what would you do? I would cook. But I'm not really a cook. I'm starting to become a cook. I've got some cookbooks and I try to make at least one dish a week. I find that it relieves my stress and it's, it's soothing. One of the best or most worthwhile investments you've ever made? My treadmill. And, and not because I'm overly overweight. Since I started working out, to just be by yourself and try to achieve a goal that is not a professional goal, that is more of a personal goal or a health healthcare goal, it really helps and it gives you some alone time. In the last five years, what new belief, behavior or habit has improved your life? It's taking time away from work. You know, shutting things down. Uh, it may be for two hours in a day. It may be for one day a week. And looking after yourself. You know, I used to let people populate my calendar as much as they wanted because everything was important and everything must be done right now. I block off times in my calendar that are for, you know, just reflection or catch up work. There are times on Friday specifically because I'm Muslim and uh, there are times that we congregate prayers on Fridays and uh, I think that's been one of the most important changes in behavior is that uh, take some time for yourself. What advice would you give an ambitious individual at the beginning of their career? Don't narrow the possibilities. Be flexible. You probably think that you know your skills and what you are strong in but let others guide you and tell you what you are strong in because what you project outside to others is not what you may think yourself and that's what will get you to wherever you want to go. Your favorite failure story? It's not getting into medical school the first time I applied. You're young, you think that you've done so much, you've got great marks, you've done everything and you know how, how could this happen? In the real world you may be good enough for something and you may not get selected or be recognized that way you just have to keep your head down continue working if you really want something if you really want to do something a certain way then it will get done i actually had applied to medical school and dental school i'd gone into dentistry but not medical school i was very upset i was very angry at the university that rejected me because i only applied to one place but then you know, with the guidance of my parents and some of my close friends, I decided to defer dentistry for a year and apply again and just try to work harder next year. I actually ended up going to the bookstore, uh, and this is a bit of a nerdy story, going to the bookstore at, at Scarborough College U of T and buying all my books for my courses the next year so I can read up on things in the summer holidays, which is really stupid and nerd. But what it did was that when they actually started teaching, I was way ahead in terms of the fact that I'd already learned some of the stuff and, and that helped me get a better mark that year and a better GP. What are some bad recommendations you hear in your profession? Just talk to them on the phone. You don't have to meet them in person. Don't worry about it. They won't remember that this has happened. That's just a frontline staff, right? Like, just don't worry about it. You, you don't have to walk through the department all the time for them to see you. We hear that th those things sometimes, and people love to see their leaders on TV and in magazines and on hospital you know, pamphlets. They love to see your memo, but what they love the most is for you to be there and actually just talk to them. Ask them questions like, what makes you so proud to work here? How can you make Osler better? How's your family? And how's the shift going? Don't ever get away from it. Describe your morning routine. I wake up, I get my uh, exercise clothes on, I work out. I have uh, two set of workouts that I do on alternate days. I finish exercising and then I pray and then I read a small verse from the Quran and then I uh, have a cup of tea and I start the work that I And in the last five years, what have you become better at saying no to? It demands on my time and situations that I think will not serve me well or will cause more difficult for me in the end. People don't even ask you, it just shows up in your calendar, it shows up in your outlook. You know, when you accept, you can just accept. When you decline, they, it actually asks you, do you want to give a reason for declining? No, I don't want to. I just don't want to do this meeting at this time. So, so our culture and technology has changed things. You just have to be confident that 
If somebody really wants to meet you or have you do something, you can't do it at that time, they will find another time for you to do it with them. When you feel overwhelmed, what do you do? I uh, walk away, go somewhere quiet, might go for a walk, might go for a run. Uh, just be with myself or talk to one of my close loved ones, just about something else. What are your biggest triggers? Two things. One is uh, people who don't give their 100% and know that they're not giving 100% and processes that discuss things over and over and over again, but get nothing done. And unfortunately, that's a huge problem in healthcare. If you could have a billboard with anything on it, what would it say and why? Wow. Whatever you want to do, do it today, because tomorrow is uncertain. There's a poet from Pakistan. He goes through this thing at, that every time I do something, I wait too long, I wait too long. And each one of the lines of his poetry ends with, I wait too long. Uh, you never want to wait too long because you may not have a chance. One book that has greatly influenced your life. Everything I learned about life, I learned in kindergarten. If you want to, is the monk who sold his Ferrari. Your biggest fear? Not being able to do for my family uh, what I want to do. Your biggest distraction? Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> the greatest challenge to leadership today? Focusing on what needs to be done now for your organization, your patients, your staff, or your clients, and focusing less on the big shiny objects that you want to do in the future. The best advice you ever received? Listen to your parents, no matter what happens. The biggest risk you've ever taken? Taking the CEO job. Your wildest aspiration? I don't know, I just want to write off in the sunset and be quiet. <laughs> Maybe one day I want to write a book or write something about my life experiences. Your greatest gifts? My family. Your weakness or your kryptonite? Late night snacks. <laughs> she chocolate. She just see old Henry bar. What would you want to say about your life when you are 90 years old? Don't give up no matter where you start. One message that you'd want to share with the world? Love back those who love you and give them your time. So now I'm going to call out some words and you tell me what each word means to you in one sentence. Leadership. To guide your team to success, no matter how big or small. Healthcare. A place where you can go to at your most vulnerable time and get what you expected. Culture. What your ancestors have built is very important. Stay with your culture and propagate it. Politics. Be political, but don't use politics. Get what you want. Wisdom. Those who have been here before you will always have more wisdom than you. Success. What you think is success now will change when you are on your deathbed. Happiness. There is always happiness to be found, no matter how great or difficult the situation is. Dreams. If you have dreams, go after them. Don't give up no matter what obstacles are placed in front of you. Legacy. Create your own legacy. Don't let others put expectations of your legacy on you. Passion. Whatever you do, no matter big or small, do it with passion and commitment. Retirement. It's not coming soon enough. <laughs> money. You need money to survive. You don't need money to be happy. <laughs>